last lecture, we looked at some examples of calculating the Fourier series for continuous time periodic signals. Uh, we started with this, uh, this uh, sawtooth waveform. And from this example, we also obtained an intuitive interpretation of Fourier series. So we can see if we accumulatively stack infinitely many uh, smooth sinusoidal signals, how they together make up this uh, uh, sawtooth waveform with very sharp angle, kind of magically. And then we look at the time domain transform of periodic signals, how they will impact the Fourier series. So for time reversal, they will impact the Fourier series uh, coefficient AK to A minus K. For time, uh, for time shifting, it will uh, deviate the original coefficient AK with the additional uh, imaginary exponential uh, factor. And for time scaling, it does not change AK, but it changes the fundamental frequency and fundamental period of the signal. So it changes the, uh, say, the harmonically related uh, complex exponentials, this, va time, this variable term in the uh, Fourier series representation. But AK does not change. So I would like to remark that this AK was calculated using the original signal, which means we use the formula for AK using the uh, fundamental frequency omega zero for the original signal. But as the signal has a different fundamental frequency, the property tells us that the Fourier coefficient AK is still the one that was inherited from the original signal. Actually, for this new signal with a different uh, fundamental frequency, you can still apply the standard procedure to calculate its Fourier series coefficient, right? We use the new fundamental frequency alpha omega. We use the new fundamental period two pi divided by alpha omega, omega zero, to calculate the new coefficient AK prime. But it just turns out that this AK prime equals AK that was calculated in the original way. Uh, so if you are interested, you may stay after this 45 minute lecture. During the class break, I will uh, open my uh, video and show you some, show you the derivation uh, for this, for this uh, property. Uh, and later I will add it to the slide. And then we have a linearity uh, property for Fourier series. The property itself is uh, intuitive, but one thing which I put a remark on the slide after the class is that uh, for this result of the uh, particular example, even if we have exponential jk2 pi t, uh, so we cannot simplify in this way. That is because uh, the power of a number, so if we have we know that two to the power three in the integer domain is just we multiply two by three times. And then we have also a intuitive interpretation for power in the rational number domain or real number domain. But for the complex number domain, the power of a number is not uh, defined in that intuitive way. So it makes this law fail in the complex number domain. So in when x and y are complex numbers, especially when x is a complex number, we cannot simply say e to the power x then to the power y equals e to the power x y. So I will not explain in detail, but I refer you to this link, this wiki link, which explains this phenomenon called failure of power and logarithm identities. And at the end of the Last uh, lecture, we learned the how to use Fourier series to determine the response of an LTI system. If the input to the system is a continuous time periodic signal, we can write its Fourier series. Then the output 
y of t can also be written conveniently in a similar form to Fourier series, right? The Fourier series y of t has the same variable part, exponential jk omega zero t, where omega zero is the common fundamental frequency of x and y. So from input to output, fundamental frequency does not change. And what changes is the coefficient multiplies the coefficient AK with the input signal with the additional factor H, capital H, which is related to K. And the calculation of H uses the unit impulse response function H of T. It is an inherent property of the LTI that is given to you. So H of tau exponential JK omega zero tau minus JK omega zero tau D tau. So after the taking the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, tau disappears. So that's why capital H is only related to K and omega zero. The advantage of this input output relationship is that as long as we have an input signal with the same fundamental period, the fundamental frequency, as long as the fundamental frequency is omega zero, even if we have x of t that has a different shape or different appearance in every period, we no longer need to recalculate h of jk omega zero because for that omega zero, the h of jk omega zero we already calculated once, it is there, it is fixed. The only thing that changes with the appearance of x of t is the Fourier coefficients a k. And we only need to recalculate the Fourier series of x of t, get the new a k, and the new a k can multiply with the same capital H jk omega zero we calculated before. And we get a new output y t. So that's why it is sometimes convenient to determine this capital H for it, signal with certain fundamental frequency. Now let's understand more about this property using the example. We have an LTI system. Uh, this time we are not given the unit impulse response function H of t, but instead we are given its input output relationship. So X and Y has this relationship in the function. Then the first question, actually it helped us review a, whole, uh, a problem in homework two and what we learned in last chapter. What is the unit impulse response H of T for this LTI system? So a hint here is to relate this expression between Y and X to the standard definition of continuous time uh, convolution. But notice the difference in the integration limit because standard convolution takes the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. But here, we stop the integral, we intercept the integral at t. So it is where we need to utilize the time shift version of unit step function. Okay, so I'll give you one minute to try this first, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, I see the questions from the chat window, but I will handle those questions together after the first lab, the first half of lecture. Now I'll do it during the break. Okay, let's look at the first step, how to determine H of tau. 
h of t. y of t here, just copy it down. And the first thing, as I said, we want to make it look similar to the standard uh, form of convolution where I put in this blue font here. And that, therefore, we need to change the integration limit from t to plus infinity to make sure that this change does not uh, change the value of this integral. We need to add something in front of x of tau. This function u of t minus tau, if you plot it, the horizontal axis is tau. So this is signal over variable time tau. But this t is a particular time that determines where this step changes, jumps from 0 to 1. u of t minus tau, because of this minus sign, we were actually uh, mirroring the signal so that the step is extending to the left. Uh, with this signal, everything to the left of t is remains unchanged. But everything to the right of t is eliminated to zero. That's why when we multiply this thing with x of tau, uh, with, with these two terms, and take the integral over, over minus infinity to plus infinity, the part from t to plus infinity just disappears. Uh, that's why it is equivalent to stop the integral at t. And then we reorganize those terms a little bit so that I look more like the standard convolution, right? X tau, X tau. This is a function of, you can understand it as a function of T minus tau. And in the convolution, it should be H of T minus tau. The, therefore, H of T minus tau is this exponential minus T mi minus tau, U T minus tau. Substitute everywhere T minus tau with the same variable, say T. The H of T is exponential minus T U T. So this tells us what is the unit impulse response of this RTI system. Now with H of T, we can apply what we just learned using Fourier series to determine the system response. So let's go through this example together. Given an input signal, which is a periodic sawtooth as shown below, and for this signal, we've already calculated its Fourier series. In last lecture, we did it. Uh, it has a fundamental period of two, right? From minus one to one is a fundamental period. So capital T is two. Omega zero, which is two pi divided by two, is pi. Therefore, the Fourier series expression of x of t has exponential jk. Omega zero equals pi t. ak we calculated already. I just copied here. Now we will use this Fourier series and the knowledge we just learned, right? We learned how to calculate H, capital H, and how to use capital H to determine Y of T. For this example, what is Y of T? We calculate capital H, JK omega zero, omega zero is pi, so JK pi. This is the standard formula to calculate H, where we have H of tau, we already know h of t from part one of this question. So h of tau is just the exponential minus tau u tau we obtained. Exponential minus jk pi tau. Again, pi is the omega zero for this example. So how to calculate this integral? The first thing we can utilize u of tau because u of tau is a signal that is one only when tau is positive, uh, when tau is positive. Therefore, we can shrink the region of this integral so that it starts from zero instead of starting from minus infinity. Because from minus infinity to zero, for that part, the function inside the integration is zero anyway. So it doesn't count to the integral. Now, after changing the integration limit, we can remove u tau first. What is left is the multiplication of two exponentials. Here we can add them up. So minus tau minus jk pi tau, we can add these two terms. So don't be scared by this failure of logarithm power identity that I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture. 
So it's said that when we have a power of a power, we cannot just multi multiply the, the exponent. But if it is the multiplication of two powers, we are still okay to add the two components. So we are still okay to do this thing, to add them up. Now we put this one exponential, exponential minus one plus jk pi tau out of the integration. There is additional factor that we need to put on the denominator. Yes, for this case, some already noticed. We, can, we don't need the discussion of whether k is zero or not. Because of this non-zero real part one, the denominator can never be zero. So we can uh, feel free to put it on the denominator without any uh, further discussion. On the numerator, we take the difference between uh, positive infinity and zero. For zero, it is straightforward because any exponential zero is just one. But for the positive infinity, so what is the value of this exponential when tau takes positive infinity? Here I give you an uh, intuitive illustration. We look at this exponential in the real and the imaginary plane. The magnitude or the modulus of this complex number, so in the plane it becomes a vector, the length of that vector only depends on the real part of the exponent. In this case, it only depends, it is exponential minus tau. It doesn't depend on the uh, imaginary part. If we look at this magnitude, exponential minus tau, as tau goes to infinity, it diminishes, it decays to zero. So which means intuitively we have a vector on the real and the imaginary plane, although as tau changes, its angle also changes, which means it rotates around the origin. But its length, so the length of that vector, will diminish to zero as tau goes to infinity. Once its length diminishes to zero, regardless of its angle, the number itself becomes zero. So that's why the limit is zero. And the second term is one. We cancel the negative size on both numerator and denominator. The result is very concise and clean. Right? H of jk omega, h of jk pi only depends on k pi. Now with this result, we come back to the purpose, to the goal of this question. We want to calculate y of t. It utilizes ak, which was from the Fourier series of input x of t. Utilizes this h jk pi, we just calculated. So h of jk pi, we already know is one plus one over one plus jk pi. Copy down, ak, and ak is something we already know. AK for X of T already calculated in the previous lecture. So AK is something that only related to K. So we know the series AK. We know the series one plus JK pi. The only variable, the only thing that is associated with the time variable T is this complex exponential. So T only appears once here. So this is a still a function of T. It's the Fourier series of Y of T and we will accomplish this work. Now let's uh, reinforce our understanding about this tool using another example. But this time we are given another LTI system and this time it's unit impulse response function, H of T is given. And we have an input signal which is related to time shifted versions of impulses delta. And for this kind of x, what is the output y of this LTI system? Again, we do it in three steps. The first step is not a necessary step when you answer the, these kind of questions, but I put it as the one step because it helps us 
understanding the behavior of input signal and the unit impulse signal, unit impulse response signal. The second step is calculate the Fourier series of the input signal, which we've done a lot of practice. The third step is to calculate capital H using capital H to determine Y of T and finish this task. So let's have one minute. In this one minute, uh, please try to plot H of T and X of T. So you know what they look like. It's a comb. Okay. So how to know the what uh, x of t appears from this expression? So it says that we have a infinite sum, and for every term infinite sum, two k minus one is the odd number. In other words, we have this infinite sum for all delta t minus odd number. And we know that it's time shift for a particular odd number. It's just a shift that impulse, so that occurs at odd number. Then if we take this infinite sum, we have this comb, an impulse, a unit impulse that occurs at every odd number, including negative and positive odd numbers, right? minus three, minus one, one, three, five. For h of t, it has two parts. U of minus t is just a time reversal of standard step u. So it extends to the left. This step extends to the left. Exponential 2t, just something that blows up over t. And when I multiply them, everything to the right of zero is canceled by zero. Everything to the left is returned by this value one. So this is what H of T look like. Okay, now let's have another minute to do a practice. For this X of T, calculate its Fourier series. That utilizes the uh, integration of a impulse signal.
OK. Let's look at the calculation of Fourier series for x of t. Fundamental period capital T is two because the distance between two consecutive impulses is two. Therefore, fundamental frequency omega zero is pi, right? Because two pi divided by two. And the AK calculated using the standard formula. Don't forget this one over capital T, which becomes one over two in this example. We select a P interval with length capital T. In this example, we select the interval from zero to two so that it contains, it completely contains the impulse that occurs at time one. And this impulse in that region is expressed as delta of t minus one because it occurs at time one. Exponential minus jk omega zero equals pi t dt. And for this kind of integral, we know that it is just replace this t in exponential minus jkt with where the impulse occurs. In this case, with one, so exponential jk one. And the rest of the integral just is one. So one divided by two exponential minus jk pi. And this, this is the Fourier series of x of t. The ak, we already replace it with what we calculated. Exponential jk pi t, pi is omega zero. Uh, yes, of course we can uh, simplify it to minus one to the power k, right? Because exponential minus j pi is minus one. Yeah, we can simplify it at any stage of this, uh, when we're solving this problem. Uh, the third step, okay, we put the result we already obtained aside and then we proceed to the third step, calculate h of jk pi. Ah, actually, I, I intended to uh, make it an exercise. So let's have one more minute to calculate if h jk omega zero yourself. And then we'll continue after one minute. So before we look at the calculation of h, let me answer this question from the chat window. Why 2k minus one will change to minus one? So as I said, in this step, we are selecting a interval of length t to calculate this integral. And the selection is to some extent free, but we always want to select the interval that is most convenient for our calculation. And in this case, we select this interval to be from zero to two. Restricted to that interval, x of t is only this thing. It is impulse that occurs at time one. And that's why we can replace the general expression x of t in that interval, in that interval only, with delta of t minus one. So I have emphasized this thing in the last lecture. If, if we were selecting a different interval, then the expression of x of t in that interval would also be different. So that's one thing you need to pay attention to. Okay. Anyway, let's proceed with the calculation of capital H. Capital H of jk omega zero equals pi. 
the standard formula. The integration is from minus infinity to plus infinity. And since we have this h of t that has that expression, and in particular, h of t is zero for everywhere t is positive. That's why we can shrink the integration interval from plus infinity to zero. At the same time, we can replace x h of t with exponential 2t only. So the u of minus t have already fulfilled its role. So it already changes the integration to zero. So we can free free to drop it this at this time. Exponential minus jk pi t copied from the last step. Again, we can combine two minus jk pi t, two t minus jk pi t as one exponent. We pull this single exponential term outside of the integral. We can put it on the denominator. And because of the non-zero real part two, this number cannot be zero, right? For a complex number to be zero, by the way, both its real and the imaginary part need to be zero. Therefore, as long as its real part is non-zero, it cannot be zero. So we can put it on the denominator. In the numerator, again, taking the difference between upper bound, and lower bound, for the lower bound minus infinity, the same intuitive interpretation in the last example also apply here because exponential 2t is the modulus of this number. And this modulus as t goes to minus infinity will shrink to zero. So regardless of how its angle changes, the complex number itself will also diminish to zero. The result is one divided by two minus jk pi. H of jk pi again is expressed in this very concise way. It's only, it only depends on jk pi. And in particular, only depends on k as a changing time index, a changing integer index. Y of t as the last step is infinite sum. ak, what is ak? ak is the queer series coefficient for x of t we calculated already. It's exponential minus jk pi divided by two, we copy it down, exponential minus jk pi divided by two, then followed by, by capital H. What is capital H? It's one over two minus jk pi. So copy it down in the denominator. What follows is the variable term, right? Time variable t appears with this only. Uh, we can, I simplified at the last stage. It's minus one to the power k. So everything coefficient is not depending on t. It's only changes, it only changes with the k. The only time variable t appears in the uh, harmonically related complex exponential terms. So both left hand side, right hand side is a function of t. So we are doing it correctly. It is the y of t. Okay. We've finished the study of continuous time Fourier series. We learned the definition of Fourier series, its properties. So a lot of properties in the very long table from the textbook, but we only learned four of them uh, and we will only be successful for four of them. Linearity, time scaling, time reversal, and time shifting. Application to LTI systems. Uh, so we need a lot of practice, but uh, basically the knowledge that you need to keep in mind is this figure. Uh, let's uh, finish the lecture today. Ah, let me, let me mention one thing. Next Friday, we will have a 45 minute in-class test. Uh, at this time, I decided that the test is taken with Blackboard plus Zoom. So basically you will uh, solve the test questions and upload it to Blackboard during that five, 45 minutes. At the same time, so you can, you can you do the Blackboard with your computer. At the same time, use your uh, tablets or cell phones uh, to log in Zoom, open the video so that, that I can see your uh, computer screen, your desk, uh, your face and your hands. So I will later put an announcement and uh, uh, some uh, uh, instructing slides 
on Blackboard. The questions, yes, the question will be posted on Blackboard similar to your assignment, but for the test, for, for the test, the question will be time limit. It will be due shortly after the, after the class. Uh, well, a lot of details. Uh, let me announce those details on Blackboard uh, during, uh, over the weekend. But basically, uh, well, I, I haven't decided whether it should be open or close book and notes. So if open book and notes for the first test, then you can have any material, except that you cannot uh, search for the answer uh, on the website. So no web browse. Uh, no web browsing. You can use the books, the class notes, and the notes, the handwritten notes by yourself. Uh, okay, let me. So, uh, please stay for the uh, tutorial today, which starts at uh, ten thirty, uh, because it will, the TA will review some materials that will be useful for the test next week. So I strongly suggest that you stay for this tutorial today. Uh, you feel free to enjoy your break, but if you are interested to stay, I will explain something that is related to the, to the content uh, that I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture. 